In this video, we'll discuss the third part of prosencephalon, that is forebrain. We have already talked about the first two parts, that is olfactory lobes and cerebral hemispheres. So the third part is known as diencephalon. This diencephalon is completely covered under cerebral hemispheres. And there are three main regions in case of diencephalon. The roof of diencephalon is known as epithalamus. Then there are two bodies. These are actually uh, parts of gray matter which are embedded in the medulla region that is in the white matter and that is known as thalamus and below thalamus is present hypothalamus. Now to understand the structure we will draw a diagram and in this diagram we will also get uh, a connection between the uh, diencephalon with the other parts of the brain also and we will also be able to understand the connections between those ventricles. So, uh, this is the corpus callosum that is connecting the cerebral hemispheres. So, this is that C-shaped connection that is corpus callosum. And let us draw the thalamus. We are seeing it from one side. So, thalamus is a mass which is seen like this and there is this roof. So this is the roof that we are talking about, epithalamus. The upper part is epithalamus. Anterior part of epithalamus is vascular and is folded and at the back side it forms a small paired projections. So this red part which we have shown the anterior part is folded, it is highly vascular and the posterior end has paired bodies. This epithalamus is formed from pyre matter, it is not nervous. So it is, it makes the roof and it is formed from pyre matter. That is the innermost layer of the meninges, the innermost meninx, that is pyre matter. Now, this anterior part is known as anterior choroid plexus. And this anterior choroid plexus secretes cerebrospinal fluid. <coughs> and the posterior paired small bulb like structures these are known as mammillary bodies mammillary bodies here from this side we are seeing only one but these are paired structures and this part this part which is visible is thalamus so there are three parts as we said epithalamus which makes the roof of diencephalon this is made up of pyre matter which extends deeper into those deep depressions or fissures and makes this roof like structure. The anterior part of this epithalamus is known as anterior choroid plexus and which secretes cerebrospinal fluid. The posterior end is projected into paired bulb like structures called mammillary bodies. <coughs> Sorry, thalamus. Thalamus, as we said, it is a mass of gray matter in medulla. So these are, and these are a paired structure. So mass of gray matter in medulla. And this thalamus also acts as a relay center. It is a relay center. That means it is going to collect the stimuli like pain and all and would pass it on to the cerebral hemisphere. So the basic function is acting as relay center. 
below high below thalamus here is present this hypothalamus so this part which we have shown here is the hypothalamus region which is just below thalamus so this is hypothalamus hypothalamus is one very very important part and it extends into a small area small stalk like area which is actually nervous in origin that means it is also made up of neurons this part which is an extended part of hypothalamus is known as infundibulum it is also called pars nervosa this is nervous in origin this infundibulum it joins a pharyngeal outgrowth so there is an outgrowth here to which this part joins and this is actually the hypophysis part this is hypophysis and these two things together this is a pharyngeal part this is pharyngeal outgrowth these two structures together make the pituitary gland so this infundibulum and hypophysis together make the pituitary gland so this hypothalamus it acts as a connection between the endocrine system and the nervous system so here we will write some important things about hypothalamus it acts as a connection between nervous system and endocrine it also regulates our body temperature and that is why it is also known as thermostat of our body it is also a center for a certain involuntary controls of our body like it regulates thirst blood pressure salivation sweating etc so these are also regulated by hypothalamus and hypothalamus also secretes neuro neuro hormones and that is how it acts as a connection inside diencephalon is present the third ventricle so here we will write in diencephalon is third ventricle the first ventricle and second ventricles they were present in the cerebral hemispheres third ventricle is present in diencephalon and it is known as diocele and it is connected we'll see the connections in uh, some time but let us draw the other parts which he uh, help us understand what all things are around it so say from here we are drawing this cerebral hemisphere so this is the cerebral hemisphere and here we would have this cerebellum which is the part of the hind brain and as we have drawn this we'll also add the connections here so this is going to be the mid brain here again completely completely surrounded or covered by this fore brain so this part is going to extend this this region is the mid brain this much part and here is pons so this is the pons part this is medulla region and it is going to extend into this spinal cord so this is how the structure is going to be this is 
pons. This is the medulla. So, cerebellum. This part. The pons and medulla. This would make the hind brain. And here, this, this much part. This part is the mid brain. So, for front part, forebrain, which we are talking of prosencephalon, cerebral hemispheres, olfactory lobes are visible only when we see it from the ventral side, and the diencephalon. This is diencephalon having three main regions, the epithalamus, thalamus, and hypothalamus region. And then, this is the part which is of hind brain. So, this is how all the structures are. Now, if we have to talk about the connections, we said that the two ventricles which are present in cerebral hemisphere are connected to the third ventricle of diencephalon, that is diocele, with the help of a common opening called foramen of Monroe. So, if we have to just represent it in a slightly schematic manner, suppose these are the two ventricles that we are talking of and they open into this third ventricle. So this is only the cavity that we are showing. So the, these are, this one would be the right, so this is first, this would be the second ventricle and this is the third ventricle that we are talking of in diencephalon. And these two have opened into this with a common opening, which we talked of earlier, is known as foramen of Monroe. Foramen of Monroe. And this third ventricle then extends through a narrow duct and which opens into the fourth ventricle, which is in the medulla region. So here is going to be the fourth ventricle and that narrow duct which joins the third ventricle with the fourth is known as either iter or it is also known as aqueduct of cilia. Aqueduct of cilia. Iter or aqueduct of sylvian. So the connections are, there are four ventricles in the brain, two in the cerebral hemispheres which are known as paraceal. They are filled with cerebrospinal fluid. They are connected to the third ventricle by a common opening which is known as foramen of Monroe. This is the third ventricle which is present in diencephalon. It is connected to the fourth ventricle. Fourth ventricle is in the medullary region. And it, the connection is with the help of a narrow duct, which is known as iter or aqueduct of sylvia. So diencephalon, which is the third part of forebrain, performs many functions. If we combine everything, thalamus part is acting as a relay center. Then epithalamus, its anterior part, it is going to secrete cerebrospinal fluid. Thalamus, oh sorry, hypothalamus, it is a connection between nervous and endocrine. And it forms a part of the pituitary gland also, the nervous part. It acts as a thermostat of our body. Plus, it also is responsible for many involuntary controls of our body. And then we will come to the other part. So this completes our forebrain. Midbrain is somewhere here. And to draw the structure, it is a little complicated because it is all buried under this. There is one more thing. In front of hypothalamus, there is a cross-like structure which we see, which is called optic chiasma, which is a part of the midbrain. So there is a cross, there is a thick muscular strand which goes in front of hypothalamus and it goes in the form of a cross. So from one side the strand which comes goes like this and the from other side it goes like this. So in front of hypothalamus there is a cross-like structure and that is optic chiasma which we see 
and that is in front of it but it is coming from the midbrain part so in the next part we'll take a midbrain